Hi, this is Candia with Candia Hainsworth Designs, and thank you so much for joining in on my new series called Behind the Stitches, where I invite you into my life to see what happens when my embroidery business is closed. In this session, this is called Art Therapy, where I have uh, uh, developed a self-art therapy to help me cope with the untimely death of my mom in August of 2020. Uh, after she passed away, I needed uh, some things to do to help me move on, to help me grieve appropriately and properly. And painting has been uh, a tremendous help and essential to uh, uh, my mental health. And so I have my uh, canvas and my supplies all set up. I am going to start painting my picture and uh, posing a question to you. So let's get started. I'm flying over the beautiful burnt sienna skies of Atlanta, Georgia. My mom's funeral was today and I'm heading back to Pennsylvania. Although I had a rough day, an emotionally draining day, these beautiful burnt sienna skies is bringing peace and even clarity to me. I haven't felt peace and clarity in weeks. I'm feeling peaceful knowing my mom's final wishes will be honored. But clarity, I have clarity because I've been shown that I need to make some changes. I need to make some changes in my life once I get back to Pennsylvania. It just occurred to me that if I die unexpectedly, who gets my embroidery machines? What will happen to all of those machines in my studio? I do not have a will. I do not have anything in writing or uh, recorded discussing my final wishes. I have life insurance. My life insurance is current. I've had life insurance for uh, over two decades, but I don't have a will in regards to my assets, in regards to my business's assets, and that matters. I've been through a lot these past three weeks, and what has happened between my siblings and I after my mom passed away, I do not want that to happen um, with my kids. I would not want my, my boys to be fighting over assets. I would not want them to go through what I went through. And so if anything that I have that I, I would leave behind in the uh, event of my untimely death, I would want to make sure that I have something in place. So I got to really, really jump on that once I get back home. I need to put it in place clearly what to do or who gets what. And I'm not talking about life insurance. Life insurance, that's, got all, that's already in place. Who gets what percentage and what and what. But I've never ever mentioned what would happen to my embroidery machines to anyone. I've never even discussed it. In the event something happens to me, what would my sons do? Would they even know what to do? And you know, here, here's what, the, what I have learned with my mom's death. I have learned that you may think somebody may be on board with an idea, but they may have their own idea that they think that you are on board with. And so it can't be assumed that just because people come from the same womb and from the same woman they would be in agreement especially adults that's what I've seen with my adult siblings after my mom passed away and uh, it, it's it's heartbreaking because uh, my mom's untimely death have revealed to me that you know uh, character <laughs> the the true the true uh character of people come to surface uh and especially when there's money or assets involved and um i just would not want anything to stir up that kind of trouble or that kind of disruption with my sons and i have to think about in the event uh something happened to me suppose they were in odds because if everything goes well then great 
but suppose they were at odds on what to do with my stuff. Suppose one of my sons wanted to sell everything while my other son wanted to keep my stuff and not sell. Would they argue? Would they fight? Could my assets or my decisions I make right now while I'm alive affect or ruin the relationship between my two sons after I'm gone? I have an answer for what I think would happen, but I don't know for sure. I was sure before my mom died, you know, but I, I can tell you that I think about what my mom's thoughts were. She would not have ever thought that the issues that have surfaced after her death between my siblings and I have uh, surfaced. She would not have ever believed that we would be arguing over the things that we had argued about. She would not have ever thought that uh, the things that have surfaced after her death, the distance that it have caused, she would have never believed that it would have caused a wedge distance um, or perhaps even ruined relationships. She would have never thought that. And so something that would have been unimaginable to her is now unimaginable to me. So I'm thinking that maybe if I put something in place now, it could avoid all of that. And perhaps, you know, these relationships between my siblings and I are repairable, but I'm, I'm predicting that the hurt that was caused will linger for some time. And the thought of my sons going through that or being put in that position crushes me. I got to put something in place. I got to put something in place. I don't want to have a conversation with one of them and they say one thing and then I have another conversation with another son and he says that I said something totally different from him and they are not on the same page. I want to sit down with both of them and have a conversation with both of them and that's what I'm going to do. Having a conversation with both of them prevents any confusion. It is clear on what I want. They can ask questions. They can even give me feedback. They can even make suggestions. Whatever problems I can prevent from happening, I want to do it. And I want to do it now. I don't want to assume my adult sons who I raised and believe have good character and strong integrity would evolve into something different over a plan that was not put in place by me. So... As I fly over these beautiful burnt sienna skies of Georgia, I'm actually looking forward to taking care of this when I get back home. I'm going to clearly state my final wishes and I want to put it on a document, maybe a temporary document, maybe a temporary notarized document until I am able to set up a legal will. This way, I don't have to worry about what would happen to my embroidery machines of uh, you know, my untimely death unexpectedly. And my sons don't have to worry about it either. I wonder, I wonder do, do members of Embroidery Boss or the people that watch me on YouTube have a plan in place of their untimely death, what would happen to their embroidery machines? I think I, think I will make a video about it and ask them. I think that I'm going to ask them to comment below when I post a question. If you died today, what happens to your embroidery machines tomorrow?